In 2003, um, early in the year, he started, Gussie started acting a little oddly, and um, he, I didn't know what was wrong with him. I really didn't, and I thought it was just stress. So I had booked the cruise for relaxation. The night before we were going to go on a cruise, he, his personality totally changed. And in the ER, I was diagnosed with a rather large frontal lobe brain tumor. Uh, five days later, the pathology report was sent to several different places because they didn't know what it was, and it turned out to be renal cell cancer. And we were in shock, and after he was scanned, they found that he had multiple lung, lung tumors, a mediastinal mass, the kidney mass, um, pancreatic tumor, and a bone met. I, I, I played drums for like 40 years. Then I got married. I had to get a real job. I, I went to school. I became a paramedic. And we had a real nice job, uh, both of us, uh, she as a nurse. We traveled a lot, did a lot of wonderful things. And we were um, regular scuba divers. We yeah. worked on a cruise line together. That's where we met yeah. 18 years ago and met in Alaska, of all places. And um, we, we never stopped traveling after that until his diagnosis. After his uh, brain surgery was over with and the pathology report came back, we went to an oncologist in our town. And um, at one point, hospice was suggested to us. And I said, what is the other option? And uh, they referred us to Moffa Cancer Center, which we are eternally grateful for because it was here that things started to look up for us. The internet's a wealth of knowledge, um, some good, some bad, but we found a lot of good information on a website called Steve Dunn's uh, Kidney Cancer Site, who was a survivor who had used interleukin way back. And we also went to the kidneycancer.org site, and also, again, a wealth of knowledge for us. So that I left him to study while I worked. The side effects, uh, once they started, usually um, 15, 20 minutes after your dose started, yeah. About 15 or 20 minutes after, he would start to shake. The rigors were really, he just, the whole bed would vibrate, and they would give him medication to try to combat that. It slowed it down a little bit. Um, the nausea came with it, the fevers, um, but the nursing staff here are incredible. They just, they had a time to a science. They could know, they knew exactly when to give him what to help prevent uh, the side effects from being worse than they were. Yeah, the, the first uh, couple of treatments were the, the worst one because they were just, trying to time when all the side effects were coming in. So after they got that done, it, it was easier, but still pretty bad. <laughs> okay. But um, worth it. For him, quitting wasn't an option. There was one point watching him with the bad side effects that he was ready to give it up. And I looked at him, I said, you know, if you want to quit, I'll take you home and I'll stay with you. But if you want to stay here, I'll stay with you too and we can kick this. And he says, okay, one more time. <laughs> but it was hard to watch some of you love going through that. It really was. We found out the tumors were starting to uh, shrink in size after the second round of IL-2. Um, and so that's when he decided to keep on going. But two more rounds after that, he wanted to quit. He was so sick. And that's when I talked him into keeping going. And it was seven months. We did seven months of, of a week a month of uh, the high dose treatment. And then by August of that year, they were gone. Uh, tell other people that are considered to uh, take uh, prolucan for uh, their uh, renal cell cancer to be positive and will let them know the side effect that you cannot quit. Don't let anybody discourage you from trying it. It's, some people will say, oh, it's a very low success rate. Well, you know, he was a 7% survival rate. Somebody has to be in that 7%. Why not you? Be positive and think that you're going to be one of the survivors that has the good success. My best advice to any caregiver is just to be there. Just hold a hand, comfort your loved one. There's sometimes there's just nothing you can do besides that. Um, it's something that's out of your control, and I think just the emotional support is what they need. And also as a patient, that's very important to have somebody there with you. Right now, I'm, um, I'm still working, thank God, uh, but I'm getting back into playing my drums, which is my life. He plays her. <laughs> right answer. <Thank> <laughs> <you>. <laughs> he plays jazz and blues every Sunday night at a place in Sarasota, 
and uh, it's a jam session, and he just has a ball. When he was going through his last round of Prolucan, he wanted a dog. He hadn't had a dog, so I bought him a golden retriever. He's 10 years old now. That's his get well gift. And of course, we have a female to go with it because he needed a girlfriend. So that's our life. We were never blessed enough to have children uh, because he was diagnosed eight months after we got married. So our dogs are our kids. And we travel with them as well. But we, we just plan life one day at a time. He makes fun and says we don't even buy green bananas anymore. You can't plan that far ahead. So just life, enjoy life as, as it is.